the Amen. cross. Amen. Yes, sir. I know many times it seems like we we uh, minimize the effect of the resurrection by talking so much about the cross. And yeah. I never mean to take away from the meaning of the resurrection. What a powerful and awesome thing right. it was. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that He led captivity captive. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's, it was a glorious and triumphant thing. Amen? Yes, <clears throat> that being sir. said, it was a done deal when He said it was finished. Right. Amen? Amen? There was no stopping the resurrection. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Peter said it was not possible that death would hold Him. Mm, my, 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 my. Think about that. It was not possible for death to hold Him. Jesus told them, He said, No man takes my life from me. I lay it down. Amen? He said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank God for the death and the resurrection of our Savior. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I can't even imagine what it meant to the disciples. Amen. Right. We get excited about it today and we feel the glory of some of the glory of it today. But can you imagine these men, Sister Nancy, that had walked with him, had talked yeah. with him, had and they saw him ripped to shreds. Right. John stood there at the foot of the cross and saw him give up the ghost. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And for them to once again be able to be with him. Uh -huh. Not just in spirit, but in body form. Right. Amen. When he came out of the tomb, he came out not as a soul and a spirit, but soul, spirit, and body. Amen. Right. And uh, Thomas touched the nail scars and the hole in his side and Amen. said, My Lord and my God. And my goodness. And we felt a little bit of that resurrection power around here today. Amen. Yes, the Bible says this same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Amen. I believe we've been quickened this morning. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few minutes. Not for very long. Hallelujah. Some of you might have a some of you might have an Easter ham in the oven or something. If you do, let me know. Amen. So I can swing by and get some of it. Uh, uh, I know Brother Sleese, unless you made it for somebody else, Brother Sleese got a pie waiting for him. Amen. Maybe somebody else could eat it. Might be gone for a while. It might be gone the time you get there. Yeah. Oh, it looked good. She put a picture of it on the internet. Amen. Hallelujah. I told her, I said, oh, sis, you shouldn't have. Just send it with Sleese this morning. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't bring it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning about something you can relate to. Yeah. Well, that's why you don't, we're here. You don't even need a, really a definition for this. Yeah. But it's pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. Come on. How many times have you heard somebody say, or maybe not in these exact words, but along these lines, well, the pressure's really getting to me. Yeah. The pressures of life. Right. Anybody had to deal with any pressures of life this week? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 So you don't really need, Brother Sleece said constantly. Mm -hmm. The word pressure, you don't really need the definition, but Bear with me this morning as I give it to you. It means the burden of a physical or mental distress. Yeah. Amen. Come on. It's pressure, and not only necessarily just in the physical, but mentally. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There is something going on in the battle of the mind today. Amen. Right. And this is not a new thing. As a matter of fact, Daniel talks about this when he speaks of the Antichrist. Right. In Daniel 7 and 25, it says, He shall speak great words against the Most High. Right. Amen? Come on. And shall wear out the saints yeah. of the Most High. Now, if you look up those word, those two words, wear out, mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, it means in a mental sense. Yeah. It means to afflict the mind. Mm -hmm. It means to wear out. It means to decay. It means to consume. It means to right. bear long. Amen? Amen? It's talking about pressure. Right. Amen? The enemy pressure. You say, Brother Billy, well, this is talking about the Antichrist. Oh, yeah, it is. But see, his tactics haven't changed. That's what gets me so much about us because we're not supposed to be ignorant concerning his devices because he's using the same old tools he's always used. Amen? He doesn't have any new tools in his weapon bag. Amen? Amen. He uses, what's it say here? What Daniel talked about the Antichrist, he said, he shall speak great words against the Most High. Yeah. Do you remember what the Bible teaches us that Lucifer did before he fell? He spoke great words against the Most High. Yeah. He, said, he said, I will ascend above the Most High God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I will be like Him. And even in the Garden of Eden, 
He spoke words against the Lord. Amen. He said, surely you will not die. Amen. When God said they would. And they did. A spiritual death. And not only that, they died physically. Amen. Yeah. Later on. So we know that his tactics are the same. Yeah. And we know that he presses you and he, he puts pressure on you. Right. And not just the enemy, but the everyday things of life that people yeah. allow to get to them. Amen. Financial wearies, they pressure you. Amen. Right. How many people have ever felt the pressure of having more bills than you've had money? Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. How many people have ever felt the pressure of having so many obligations and so little money to scatter, you know, to, to meet those obligations. Or uh, somebody sung a song once too much, too much month at the end of the money. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Some of us can relate to that. Most of us can relate to that. Sooner or later, Amen. you'll relate to that in life. Amen? Right. How many people can relate to pressures from your family? Oh, yeah. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Amen? Pressures. Things that are heavy. There's a burden. It feels like things are heavy. Is it just me? Or am I the only one that's ever felt like it was just something pressing you down? Amen. Something trying to press you back. Amen. Come on. Worries about finances. Worries about family members. Yeah. Come on. Amen. i never seen so many family members fighting amongst themselves. Can't nobody get along. I thought it was our family, but apparently ain't. Somebody sent me a letter and said, we can't get together for Christmas because everybody fights. Yeah. Amen. So it's not just our family, Ma. Amen. You can rest easy. We thought we was the wild ones, you know, the weird ones of the bunch. Everybody else must be, some people must be having the same problem we are, Brother Bill. Amen. Amen. Can't get along. Pressure. Feeling the pressures of life. Pressures of finances. Having to work all week long. As much as you can. Using all of your energy just to make ends meet. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, posted a picture on the internet that said they had stretched old George so far and they had a dollar. They had stretched him so far they believed they could see his underwear. <laughs> Amen. The dollar had got so thin. Amen. So stretching a dollar. Everybody knows that kind of pressure. And it seems like the day that we live in pressure with family. How about pressure when it comes to your physical well-being? Right. Amen. Anybody ever felt that before? Yeah, Sister Nancy, you know what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sickness, it seems like, just keeps you wore down. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So pressure from every angle. Pressure in the mind. We got more people depressed today than has ever been depressed. Right. We got more people on antidepressants than ever has been before. Amen. Every time you go to a doctor, well, let me put you on antidepressants. Yeah. Amen. You don't feel good. We got more people on what is that other disease they claim everybody's got? Uh, AD. Uh, attention deficit disorder. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Everybody's got that. Right. Amen. Amen? Parents, because of the pressure from their children, they're acting like kids. Right. Let's put them on something to calm them down. Come on. Amen? I'm not saying that there's not such a mental sickness as that, but I'm telling you there ain't as much of it as people are letting on. Amen? There ain't as much of it as the doctors are giving the drugs out to treat. All right. Amen? Come on. Kids are supposed to be full of energy. Right. They always have been. Yeah. Amen? So you dope them down to try to take the pressure of the kids off of you. Right. You dope your own mind down to try and take the pressures of life off of you. Yeah. Getting peace out of a bottle when it can be found in the Bible. Yeah. Amen? Oh, can I say that again, Brother Sleaze? Getting peace out of a bottle when it can be found in the Bible. Amen? Yeah. We're looking for peace in all the wrong places. We're looking for love in all the wrong places. We're looking for relief. In all the wrong yeah. ways. And pressure affects people different ways. Yes, Amen. Sir. I was going to give you the scripture, John 4 and 3. 1 John 4 and 3. You can write that down. We were talking about the Antichrist and the tactics that Daniel talks about. Well, according to John, that spirit's already in the world today. Amen. We know that it's coming. He said, you've heard that the Antichrist shall come. Well, the spirit's already here. I mean, already it is, it is it in the world today. Amen. So we see a warfare... We know it is devices of the enemy. We know that Paul told us to not let Satan get an advantage of us because we're not supposed to be ignorant concerning his devices. So what do we do? How do we react to pressure today? Well, some people get angry. Amen. Some people get mad. Some people get depressed. Some people get frustrated. Amen. All of us react to pressure one way or the other. Mm -hmm. We either sit down and sing the blues or we get mad and angry at circumstances in our life. 
We get mad and angry at people in our life. Amen? How many people ever got mad at your family? Amen? How many people ever got mad at the bill collector simply because they wanted to get paid? Amen? Amen? You get aggravated at the bill collectors. Well, how dare they have to want me to pay my bills? Yeah. Amen? Pressure. Some people, the pressure gets to them so much, they go out and hang themselves, or they go out and shoot themselves, or they go out and take a handful of pills. I can't take it anymore. All right. So we deal with pressure in many different ways. Amen? Amen. A lot of people get depressed. Right. Run to the doctor and get them something to make them feel good. Yeah. Amen? They get feeling too good, they run to the doctor and get something to make them feel not so good, so they'll slow down. Take something to get up. Take something to go down. Amen. Yeah. Got to have something to get me going in the morning. Got to have something to put me to sleep at night. Come on. Why? Because of the pressures of life. Right. They're in one of us. Under the sound of my voice. Whether you're overseas or whether you're in this country, you know what pressure is. Yeah. You know what it's like to have things in your life that seems like it's closing in on you. Have you ever felt like the walls were closing in? That's the kind of pressure I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt like your mind was wore out? That's the kind of pressure I'm talking about. That is a warfare. That is a that is something in these last days that we're seeing more and more of. Yeah. Pressure. Amen. Come on. How do we respond to that pressure? Go with me to Philippians, the third chapter, this morning. And let's see what Paul says. Philippians 3 and 13. Philippians 3 and 13. Hang with me this morning. We're going somewhere. Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th verse. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgetting those things which are behind. How many people ever felt the pressure of your past? Yeah. Amen. Amen? Yeah. How many people ever felt the pressure of your brothers and your sisters? I Amen? I they rub you the wrong way. They put pressure on you. Well, it seems like they're more of an obstacle than they are a help. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Got to yell now. <laughs> Out of that. <laughs> Paul says this. I forget those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yeah. Amen. Then he uses a word I want to look at this morning for just a minute. I press. That word press. Amen. That word press is actually part of the word pressure. Amen. Yeah. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I press toward. I press forward. I press on. Right. Now why was Paul talking about pressing? There's no need to press unless you have pressure pushing back the opposite direction. Amen. There's no use to there's no need to press unless you have some kind of uh, some kind of obstacle or some kind of force shoving back in the other direction. Amen. Yep. Ain't easy to swim upstream, is it? A lot easier to go along with the flow, but the problem with that is the flow's going to hell. Amen. So you have to swim against the flow. Have to swim against the stream, against the tide. Amen. Paul said, I press. It ain't always an easy thing. There are pressures in life. But I press. Amen. There, Paul, he had, he had what did, his testimony, he talked about being whipped. Talked about being left for dead. Talked about being shipwrecked. Talked about uh, uh, arguments. And he didn't put it this way, but you can look it up later. He talked about things, you know, going on with the brethren. Amen. He t and he talks about the war going on within himself. There was pressures all around Paul, but he said, I press. I press toward the bark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I press against, there is opposition, but I press anyway. There's going to be opposition. Somebody didn't want you to come to church this morning. That's right. Amen. I don't have to tell you his name. You know who he is. Amen. Amen. He didn't want you to come to the house of God this morning. Right. So what did he do? He opposed that. That's it. He applied pressure to try to get you to stay home. Yes, sir. <clears throat> And for many people, it works most of the time. Yeah. Well, Amen. There ain't a one of us this morning that don't have to press through Amen. situations and circumstances yeah. and forces that try and shove us back the other way. Come on. I press. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pressure comes from circumstances and situations and people and self. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And how about this? Pressure comes from the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. But we have to press. What Paul said he had to do. When the opposition tries to shove you back, you have to press forward. Amen. Amen. That's right. How do we react to that? Do we get mad? Do we get angry? Do we sit down? Do we get depressed? Do we get discouraged? Or do we press through like the Bible teaches us to press through? Come on. Amen. Getting angry and mad ain't going to do you no good. Right. Amen. Matter of fact, I'd probably just apply more pressure to you. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. I know they talk about, well, if you just feel the pressure building up, go out into the woods and find your place and just scream and let it out. I got better advice for you this yeah. morning. If you feel the pressures of life getting to you, find your place and make yourself an old fashioned altar of prayer. Amen. Yeah. Brother Billy, how do I deal with the pressures of life? How do I press through these things? Somebody was teaching this week about the power of positive thinking. And don't get me wrong, I know that there is some good in being thinking positive, but I wouldn't give you a nickel for that compared to the power of prayer and faith. Amen. And if you'll begin to pray when the pressures of life begin to close in, prayer is a tool that you can use to release the pressure to help you to press to be able to stand in the last days against the wiles of the devil and begin to have faith and prayer and press on through the circumstances and situations. The pressure that your job applies. The pressure that your finances applies. The pressure that your own flesh applies. It says, I don't feel like going. Say, shut up. We're going to go anyway. Amen. Jesus didn't feel feel like going to the cross. You talk about having to press, honey. How about the fact that he pressed at the whipping post so that he wouldn't die so he could make it to the cross? How about the fact that he pressed when they put the crown of thorns in his head so that he wouldn't die before he made it to the cross? How about the fact that he pressed whenever the, 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 the cross was dropped on his back for him to climb up Mount Calvary with the cross on his back? How about the fact that it was the press? Do you think it was easy? Do you think he had no pressure against him? The forces of hell tried their best to stop him before he made it to the top of Calvary, but he pressed on through. Amen. 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 If you make it, right. you will not make it without pressing. That's it. Amen. Come on. Because there is too much opposition. Right. There's too much trying to push you the other way. And you know what the sad thing about it is? Most of the time, we let it push us. Amen. Right. We let it push us. We let pressure keep us on the couch instead of bringing us to church. Amen. We let pressure cause us to be depressed instead of spending time in prayer. We let pressure cause us to be mad at God. Yeah. I don't understand why God would allow this. I don't understand yeah. why these things have to happen to me. You may have thought those things before. Amen. Maybe you two spirits don't say them, but you probably thought them one time or another. I don't understand this. Why'd this have to happen to me? These people over here, they live ungodly, they drink, they cuss, they, they do drugs, and they're they're prospering. Here I am, I'm trying to do the best I can. It seems like one pressure right after the other. Amen. What are you gonna do? You gonna throw up your hands and give up and sit down, or you gonna press? Amen. Are you gonna allow those things to crush you, to stop you, to drive you back? Or are you gonna press your way by saying, Lord, I don't understand it, but I believe your word. Amen. I know that all things work together. Oh my God goodness. All things work together for my good. I'm going to stand on your word. Why do you think he said when you've done all you can do to stand, just stand. Sometimes just standing is a prayer. Say amen. Sometimes just standing where you're at is making a statement to the devil. I know that when I'm going through things, I see the pressure. I feel the pressure, but I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to press. I'm going to press. And how do we press? Do we press by getting angry? Like I said, anger won't do you no good. Right. Getting mad? Ain't going to do you no good. Right. Getting depressed? Well, it really ain't going to do you no good. Right. You're going to sit around saying gloom, despair, and agony on me and just miss it all. Yeah. Amen? Press. Through prayer. Through faith. Right. And we see many examples in the Word of God of people that had to press. People that there was opposition. See, you're not no some strange case. Right. I realize you think today, you think it's a strange thing that's happened to you. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But there are people all through the history of the world, mm -hmm. many of them we can find in the Word of God, yeah. that had opposition, mm -hmm. Amen. that had pressure on their sleeves, <clears throat> that, thorn in side. that had a thorn in their flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. People that had to press through things in life. Right. Life happens to everybody. Amen. Things happen to everybody. Everybody goes through things. Amen. The question is, is how are you going to react? How about the woman with the issue of blood? Yeah. We can find that in Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 34. You talk about somebody having to press through some things. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us that this woman had bled for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Amen. So she had to press through the way she felt. Amen. She didn't feel like going and trying to get a hold of Jesus that day. That's true. When you lose blood, you lose strength. When you lose blood, you lose life. 
The life is in the blood. Your strength is in the blood. How many people have ever been low on blood before? And you know how that feels. Amen. Yeah. This woman had lost, so she had to push through the way she felt. How many people today have to push through the way you feel? Amen. Amen. How many people today has allowed the way that you feel push you? Amen. 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 Instead of pressing on through, instead of taking a stand, instead of having the faith, instead of pressing through with prayer, we just sit down. Yeah. I just can't do it. Come on. Thank God Jesus didn't say that. Amen. 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 I'm not comparing anything we go to through what he to what he went through because what we go through is little of nothing compared to what Jesus faced. Amen. Amen. Little of nothing. But Brother Billy, you don't understand. No, we apparently don't understand. Amen. Because we have never faced anything like he faced. Amen. Amen. Nothing you go through is compared to that. That's right. And he went through that. And not for himself, for you. Amen. Amen. So what else this woman with the issue of blood had to press through? She had to press through the report of the doctors. Yeah. She had to refuse to believe the doctors who had to tell her there was no hope. Mm -hmm. Amen. How about the fact that she spent all of her money? My goodness, that's a press right there. Amen. It's a pressure. Brother Isaac came to me this morning and he said, I've got my life savings right here. And he held out his hand that was three quarters. And I thought, I know how you feel, buddy. Amen. 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 That's a press. That's pressure. That's right. This woman didn't have no money. She had to press through that, Brother Bill. Amen. This woman was sick. She had to press through that. Right. This woman didn't have no strength left, Brother Scott. She had to press through that. Amen. This woman had to press through the report of the doctors. Whose report are we going to believe today? Right. She had heard that Jesus was coming. Mm -hmm. And she had said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of His garment... I know I'll be made whole. Right. So with faith, she pressed through. Oh, with faith, did she get mad at Amy? The Bible doesn't say she did. I'm sure she went through some of that. Right. Can you imagine the frustration of, oh, there's a doctor over there. Maybe he can help me. No, oh. I can't help you. Give me your money, but I can't help you. Amen. Come on. All of the pressures, this woman. And not only that, when she gets to where he's at, she can't get to him for the crowd. Right. So she has to press through them too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, it ain't enough day to press through your flesh. You've got to press through everybody else's too. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish we'd get a hold of that this morning. Amen. Yeah. I don't just have my flesh to press through. i got to press through yours. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. we got to press through everybody else's flesh too. So she presses through. She gets a hold of his garment. Amen. And Jesus said, who touched my clothes? Yeah. Who touched my clothes? Uh -huh. <laughs> and the disciples said to him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou seest who touched me? Mm -hmm. And he looked around about me to see her that had done this thing. Mm -hmm. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Mm -hmm. Go in peace, Amen. and be whole of thy plague. Now, her faith pressed through. Right. Amen. True. I know sometimes you don't understand it, but your faith has to endeavor. Amen. Your faith has to endure. Right. Your faith has to endure. Yes. Press. It was a press for this woman. How about blind Bartimaeus? Sitting by the roadside begging. And he hears Jesus is coming by. Can you imagine what this man had to press through? Mm. He, was a, he was blind for one thing. That's not an easy burden to carry. He was a beggar for another. So he had to press through not only his illness or his disability, but he had to press through his status in life. He was a beggar. He was considered nothing more than just to be spit on one. Maybe throw him a quarter every now and then, if you're generous, amen. He had to press through that. He had to press through the fact that he was sitting there not in royal garments, but in beggar's clothes. So he hears Jesus is coming by with the building. He hollers out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Can you imagine the press? That it, can you imagine what it took for that man? Here I am, a beggar. I'm blind. I'm, just, I'm filthy. I stink. I'm sitting beside the roadside. Yet he cries out for Jesus. He responds to the pressure of life by crying out. It do you good to respond to the pressures of life. Not by crying out against your brother, but by crying out to the Lord. Yes, amen. Crying out to the Lord. 
And guess what else he had to press through? This seems to be something that pops up all the time. When he began to cry out, the people turned to him and said, Shut up! So now he's got to press through that. I don't know what kind of what it took for him to muster up the courage to holler, Thou son of David, have mercy on me once. But then they turn to him and they tell him, Shut up! But instead of him turning to the crowd and getting mad and angry and telling them off, giving them a piece of his mind, you've done that before? Trying to relieve some pressure? Give them a piece of your mind? You didn't feel no better when you got done. Matter of fact, you felt worse because then you thought, I shouldn't have done that. Can I preach where we live this morning? Amen. How many times have you thought, well, I'll show them, and when you showed them, you wished you hadn't. Amen. Amen. Right. You told them off. Amen. And you felt worse when you got done than you did when you started. Amen. That's because he's talking to the wrong person. You should have been crying out to God, not crying out against the people. So he don't even pay them no mind with Bill. He cries the more. He cries louder. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him and stops. He said, bring him to me. <laughs> Come to me. He lays aside his beggar's garments and Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. Why? Because he pressed. He pressed through the pressures of life. He pressed through the pressure of his disability. He pressed through the pressures of his status and his in life and in his position. Ball, he pressed. And he was healed. Ball, that's, that's Mark 10 and 46. How about the widow and the unjust judge? This is a woman that had to press. Amen. Right. The Bible says that Jesus taught them and he was talking about praying. Luke 18 and 1, he said, He spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Seeing there was in the city a judge that feared not God, neither regarded man. Mm. There was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now there we see she's going through some kind of pressure. She's got an adversary. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's putting pressure on her. So she has to press through that and go to this man that I don't even believe in God. He doesn't regard God. He doesn't regard man. He has no respect for nobody. So she has to get through that too. Amen. How many times in your life you had to deal with people and you knew that God was not a part of their life. Yeah. She had to press through. Amen. She had to press through. Not only the fact that she had an adversary, when she does get there, and she begins to knock, and she begins to plead with Him, if you read the story that Jesus tells, the parable that He gives us, that He would not for a while. He ignored her for a while. But afterward, after what? After she kept on coming, Brother Bill, after she kept on pressing, he said, I want to have to do something, not because I fear God, not because I regard man, but because this woman's worrying me to death. Amen? She refused to stop pressing. God can use some people today that will refuse to stop pressing. Amen? I know you don't feel like going on sometime, but go on anyway. I know you don't feel like standing sometime, but stand in the faith anyway. I know you don't feel like praying sometimes, but hallelujah to God, pray anyway. Pray anyway. Go on anyway. Stand anyway. Stand on the Word of God. Stand on the promises of God. Stand for Jesus and let the world go by. I know sometimes you don't even feel like doing nothing but standing. That's alright. Stand therefore. Amen. Stand on the Word of God. Stand on the promises of God. Press through the opposition of the enemy that don't want you to make it. Amen. And press through the pressures of life. Yes, with prayer and with faith Amen. in God. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. My goodness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Press through. She had to press through her situation. She had to press through her adversary. Yes. She had to press through because she wasn't getting an answer. Right. Oh my goodness. Remember, he's given us examples of prayer here. Amen. How many times have you ever prayed and nothing happened? And you thought, oh well, I'll pray again. You prayed and nothing happened. And the longer you, the more you prayed, and the more nothing happened, Brother Bill, the more oppressed it was for you to keep asking. Mm -hmm. Amen. But she kept on. She kept on pressing through prayer. Amen. <laughs> She's going to worry me with her constant coming. She's going to keep with her continual coming. Amen. She's going to keep on asking. She's wearying me. 
She's pressing me. Amen. See, he pressed by. He, he put pressure on her. He shoved her, but she shoved back. We let the devil shove us around. Amen. And I ain't talking about getting in a shoving match with him and get down on his level because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. This is a spiritual warfare. I'm talking about girding your loins with the truth. Amen. I'm talking about having the breastplate of righteousness. I'm talking about standing on the Word of God. Amen. And stand, oh, hallelujah. And pressing and standing in these last days and having the faith and the prayer in our life that we Whoa. need to have to withstand the pressures yeah. of this life. Amen. Amen. Pressure. This, these, and we could go on and on. The people in the yeah. Bible who oh, faced yeah. pressure. Oh, all Amen. Of all of them, Brother Slee said. People that endured. People that stood when it seemed like they should have fallen, but they stood on the promises of God. Right. Amen. I know this ain't no big mystery for you today, but maybe it's going to help somebody out there that when pressure is applied, you respond with anger. Now maybe you know that ain't the way to respond. Amen. Maybe you respond by telling somebody off when you should be responding by telling somebody your problems. Amen. Talking to Jesus. Talking to the Lord. Amen. Praying and having faith that God will do. Even when they don't like it, it don't look good, you still know that God's Word is true. And you stand on what God has spoke to you. Amen. And I know today's Easter. I know that we should have an Easter play or Easter message. But listen, when you talk about having to press, they ain't nobody ever had to press any more than Jesus did. That's right, brother. When he fell in the garden and sweated great drops of blood? Yes. You think it was easy for him? No. Mm. But he prayed for strength to go on. Mm. Amen. Try that sometime. Yeah. When you feel the pressure of life closing in, pray for the strength to go on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stand on the Word of God. God has made you promises and you ain't standing on them like you need to. Right. God has made us promises and we're not standing on them Amen. like we need to. The Apostle Paul would say, and I'm closing this morning. The Apostle Paul would say in Ephesians 6 and 10, y'all can probably quote this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against yeah. spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. Yeah. Stand on the promises of God. Stand on His Word this morning. Amen. Having your loins girt about with truth. Right. Talking about the Word of God. Amen. Come on. And having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Come on. praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perse perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. When the pressure of life pushes on you, yeah. push back True. with prayer and faith and standing on the promises of God. Yes, sir. I know, Lord, I don't feel good, but I'm standing on Your Word. Yes. I know my physical body doesn't feel my healing, but I'm standing on Your Word mm -hmm. that Your stripes says I'm healed. Right. I know today that there is opposition, but I'm going to stand for You. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Amen. quit telling people off. Start telling the Lord about it. If we spend as much time in prayer as we do telling people what we think, we'd be a whole lot more spiritual than we are today. Amen. All right. You tell people off a whole lot more than you talk to the Lord. Most people do. Maybe you don't, but most people do. Amen. Right. Don't let the pressures of your family keep you down mm -hmm. and push you back. Mm -hmm. Don't let the pressures of your health keep you down and push you back. Right. Don't let the pressure of your finances keep you down and push you back. Come on. Stand on the Word of God. Yeah. Grab a hold of the promises. You don't even have to have all of them. Just get a hold of one. That's it, bro. Get a hold of one of them. That's, That's enough to defeat the devil right yes, there. Yes, sir. When he came to Jesus in the wilderness and he began to spew off his stuff, yeah. Jesus didn't quote the whole Old Testament to him. No. He just gave him a scripture. Right. And that was enough. Yes, sir. Amen. It's enough for you today too. Amen. Sink your teeth into the promises of the Word of God yeah. and see that you don't deal with pressures differently in your life. That's it, Amen. Brother. Hallelujah. Brother Isaac.